Hi everyone, welcome to another video. Have you ever wondered how you can get started with creating your first Revit project? Keep watching and hopefully this video will help you get started with creating a structural model in Revit 2020. Revit has now opened and you can see there's some models that are shown here on the screen. Those are sample models, but we're not going to be using these. Let's create something from scratch. So let's go to models here and hit new. And then I will select from the structural template and create new project and then hit OK. All right, so now it's loaded. And the first thing I see here is some circles. And I'll explain what those are later. But here it says it's level two, OK? And looking here in the project browser, this is where all of the levels and 3D views and elevations, basically any of the views that you need, these are going to be showed here in the project browser. And this is the properties of anything that you click in the model. So first, let's set our different levels for the house. So to do that, let's go to an elevation view. So I'm going to hit the east elevation view, which these are the different elevation views, these circles. So you can also double click on one and it takes you to the west elevation view, which is what this is. And you can see here the units are a little off. I think this is in metric. So you can change the project units by going to manage and then searching for one of these. Yeah, this is the project units and I can change the length here to feet and fractional inches. Okay, let's do that. What does that look like? Okay, nine foot 10. So that seems pretty good. So these are the levels. I can also click on level two and make this, for example, 11 feet tall. And I can also change the, the name of the letter. So this is level one. I can call it first floor. And it's going to rename corresponding views. Just hit OK. And I will call this second floor. Let me go and fix that. Yes, I can also hit don't show me again. OK, so we have a first and second floor. So now let's go to our first floor. So this is the first floor. And it's blank. We need to put some grids on this thing. So to do that, go to structure. And let's do grid. So now all you have to do is click somewhere and then just drag the grid down. And right now, if I zoom in, it's number one. And I can do the same thing by copying this using this copy key. And this is in the modify panel. I can copy it here and paste it. Let's do 24 feet. And I can just put the apostrophe like that. And that will be 24 feet away. And I can create another grid and constrain it. So now we have our east-west grid. So now let's do our north-south grids. To make it more clear, I'm going to change these from num numerical to alphabetical. So I'll call that A and now be B. And I'll just keep doing that. If you want your grid bubbles to show on both sides or both ends of the grid, you can just click this checkbox here and it will put the bubble on both ends. Just like that. So now that we have our grids, we can put some columns in here. And you can do that by going to column. And this is going to select a column here. So let me just pick this size column here and I can put them, I can click one by one and put them in the intersection like that. Or I can also go ahead and do add grids and then select all of your grid lines and hit finish. And then that should automatically put your grid lines for your columns where your grid lines are. So now if you want to see what this looks like in 3D, you can come to the top and hit this house icon and this should take you to the 3D view. And you can see there's a bunch of different columns. All right, so now let's put beams on this thing. So let's open up the second floor plan. So here it is, second floor plan. And I'm going to go to the structure panel and click on beam. And now I'm just gonna select any beam here. Let's just do this W by 100 by 19. And you can just click from column to column and it should place the beam there. If you have the chain box, checked, then you can easily just chain your beam from point to point. You can also 
go back to the beam here and put a beam on every grid line. And similarly to what we did the first time with the columns, you can select the columns like this and hit finish. And this should put the beams at every intersection. So in 3D, this is what it looks like. So there's columns everywhere. Now let's put some beams in between these bays. And an easy way to do that is by doing something called the beam system, which is shown here. And a beam system is going to place the beams at whatever distance, fixed distance you want automatically without having to split them up yourself. And you can also change the direction that you want them to span by hovering over the, the north-south beam like this or the east-west beam like this. And you can do that for any bay. You can also specify your beam type. So let me do this size beam. And I want my beams to be spaced. Let's do, I don't really care about the distance. Let's do, I only want three beams. So now I can go and just hit, click on this and there we go. And I can just do this for all the bays. And if you had escape, the beams should all be there. And in 3D view, this is what it looks like. Cool. So now this building isn't complete without foundations. To put foundations, there's a foundation box here and it has isolated slab and slab, uh, isolated wall and slab. And I'm just going to do isolated footings here. And you can also put them in 3D view, but it, you have less control doing that. I find it easier to do that on the plan view. So I'll go to the first floor and go to my isolated foundation and let's do a square foundation and you can see that there is no square foundation here they're both rectangular so to do a square foundation I can edit this type and duplicate it and let me call it 1800 by 1800 here and of course the units or the type of foundations you have may vary from what I have and that's okay and now it should be a square footing. And you can just click, click like that, or go back to the grids menu, hit all of them, and then click on finish. Cool, so now our foundations are there. And let's check the elevation in 3D. This is what they look like. And they are right below the first floor. Okay, so we have our first floor plan here and our second floor plan. And now let's say I want to label all of these beams. To do that, you can go to annotate and I can just hit tag all or tag by category. And another way, a shortcut to do that is coming here at the top of the, at the, top of the menu bar, there's a tag by category. So this will individually tag the beams and you can see it puts a leader. Let's say I don't want to have a leader. I just want to tag the beams like that. Or I can also do tag all. And then I will do all objects in current view. Or I can also click on what I want to tag. So let's say I just want to do the framing tags. And I'll hit apply. So that tagged all of the framing members, except for the columns, because I did not say tag columns. And now let's go to the first floor, and on the first floor, I want to label all of the columns. So I can also I can go back to tag by category, or I can go back to tag all, and then do scroll down here, and go to structural column tags, and I want to have a leader, let's say horizontal, and okay. And there you go, it tagged all of the columns. Cool, so I have my first floor and I have my second floor. I can also go to an elevation view and see the building and I can put a, throw some dimensions on here, 11 feet. I can also dimension the thickness of these members, but let's not do that. Let's say I want to move these away from the building. I can do it like that and that's it. That is a very simple way of starting your first structural Revit model. I hope this helped.
If you have any suggestions or if you have any questions, please let me know in the, in the comment box. And I hope this helps you with your project. Thank you for watching and please give this a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.